This is a Dynanite uh, hammer tote device. It's a disposable kit that has the impactor, the drills, and the implant itself. Now we've opened up these kits and we see that there is a 12, a 14, and a 16 millimeter size. Each component size has a color and then you will have a choice either of a straight implant or a bent implant if you'd like to give a little flexion to the hammer toe itself. These kits are composed of different uh, components which include an impactor, the implant, drills, and a K-wire which is a very important part of the cannulated drill set. In this demonstration we're going to do a Dynanite hammer toe implant. We've marked a dorsal longitudinal incision and I'll go ahead and just do our vertical cut and deepening this through the, the soft tissue right down to the capsule. I'll usually then just flex the tip of the toe which helps us to expose it. And now we see coming into view the capsule itself and the extensor tendon is part of that which will uh, area that we will excise. So once I've made my longitudinal incision then we go horizontally and we do an elliptical incision in which we excise the entire dorsal capsule and peel that off of the distal condyle of the proximal phalanx. So with the toe flex now, so now we grasp the distal fragment and resect it and we now have a very flat cut in this region and I think it's important to just downsize the uh, condylar region a little bit just to avoid the possibility of a interdigital corn which can develop if you have a prominent condylar region. So we go ahead and just remove a little bit of the condyle. I'm going to go ahead and do a flat cut with the saw. Now that gives us two very nice surfaces here. Now one of the things that can be problematic when you put your hammer toe device in, sometimes there's not enough room to reduce it. I think there's plenty of room here but I'll just tell you one little trick is that sometimes if it doesn't fit you'll just take your blade and you'll just cut the plantar capsule, not the flexor tendon, but the plantar capsule and that'll give you another millimeter or two which will allow you to reduce the implant as you put it in place. We're going to go ahead and place our 045 K wire right down the intermediary canal of the proximal phalanx and you just let it run. It'll, it'll go in the intermediary canal. You don't want to go into the MTP joint, but that feels, just by letting it run, it's in the right location. As we come in, you can probably see very nicely the laser line right here, and that's as deep as I'll place this. And so we're coming right in, and there I'll stop right there. Often the pin comes out with it, and that's just fine. That's our prep there. We don't use any brooches at all. Now we'll come distally, and we'll go ahead, and we'll put our K-wire in from the in the middle phalanx. And again, I want to center it if I can, and I want to come out the tip of the toe. And usually I'll bring it out a little bit further just to make it easy to deal with. And I'll just leave it proud by about two millimeters or so. Now with steadying the uh, K-wire with my thumb and long finger, I'm going to bring the smaller drill into place. And again, watch the laser line and there we are. But I, I steadied the pin so it wouldn't come out because I'm going to use that as I put the hammer toe device in. So let's look at our, our device and this is the device that uh, holds the hammer toe implant and here we see the screw part in place and of course it's cannulated. There's some keys here that I want you to watch. The colors in material each size has its own particular color, but you have to look from the side and see is it straight or is it bent. This one is a straight implant and uh, if we look here there's a little key right here which shows a flat surface here and a flat surface here. Why that's important is because as you deliver this when you're all done implanting it you want to make sure you can see the flat surface here. Since this is a straight implant it has a flat surface on both sides. Now notice I've left it proud a little bit and uh, that makes it very easy for me to bring in the implant and you can see the screw portion which goes distally into the middle phalanx and now I'm twisting it in place and it's seating very nicely in that prepared drill hole.
So now I can take it off and look, and I think that's probably fairly nice. I'm just, I'm a little off on my twist, and so I'm going to reseat it, and there we go. Now, notice that we're still proud on this K-wire. In order to compress the barbs, we need to back that K-wire down just a little bit so it doesn't impede the closure of the barbs. Now, you can actually deliver the barbs just into this hole, and we'll lift this up and we'll show the hole very nicely here. But I can tell you that I'm a little more comfortable just coming in with the clamp and compressing them and then delivering it just into the hole. And that's all you have to do to deliver it into the hole and then compress it. We have what we call the toe tamp, and it's cannulated, and we can just place it on the K-wire. We steady the hammer toe with our fingers. We just impact it, and now let's look at that. And we've really compressed it very nicely. I think that is a very important part of this procedure. You don't need to use the K-wire, but I can just tell you that I like sort of a belt and suspenders, so I tend to use this stainless steel K-wire. So let's go ahead and get an x-ray now. So we see now that we have the intermedullary K-wire through the center of the implant. The nice thing about this device is that being cannulated, you can go across the MTP joint at a surgeon's discretion if they want to stabilize that joint. And there are very few implants that allow you to do this. So I like to use the toe tamp just to bend it. It's just on the case. You can bend it down even get a little more bend if you wish. It's just uh, a nice way to finish the end of the K-wire and then we cut the prominent part of the K-wire. I close with an interrupted suture. I leave the K-wire in whether it's across the MTP joint or not only for three weeks. By that point this area is sticky and solid and I think the K-wire can come out at that point. Here we see an example of the implant without a K-wire in place, and you can see that the uh, implant is well seated. For the post-operative care, I'll use a stiff-soled post-operative shoe and a gauze and tape dressing. I'll usually use tape after about three weeks to hold the toe in place. Sutures are usually removed at three weeks following surgery.